So what do you have in store for us today on our third podcast and uh, this YouTube video? 20 fitness tips. Yep. Today we're just going to talk about 10. I think it'll be a good one. Yeah. Okay. The first one is they need to prepare to be consistent. Prepare to be consistent. What do you mean by consistent? So um, I'm sure Socrates said it. We are what we repeatedly do. We are what we repeatedly do. So the more consistent we are, the more it becomes a habit and we don't think about it as much. Um, so if we get into a consistency, going, up, going to do workouts will be second nature. Okay, and does that include get, getting to gym so many yes. times a week? Yeah. So even if you don't feel like going to the gym, you know, don't rely on your feelings, put on your clothes, get in the car, go to the gym and just start. That's half the battle one, is it yes. not? Yeah. Okay, okay so, so consistency. And then how many times a week would you recommend people should be training at least? I would say at least three days a week. That no, should no, be three. more than enough. Yeah. The and would you split that over? Would you do Monday, Wednesday and Friday? Or would you do three days consecutive or sorts thing? Um, three days in a row would be fine. Mm -hmm. um, but I think to spread it out would be more beneficial. Okay. Um, yeah, so that your body Especially if only doing three out of seven days a week. Yeah. Basically. So, okay. yeah. Okay, perfect consistency. That's number one. Number two. Okay, train for at least 30 minutes when you do your workouts. At okay. least 30 minutes, yeah. We want to increase the temperature of our body so that we can start to burn the fat that we don't want. Okay, so um, through my experience, doing less than 30 minutes um, is not really helping anyone. Okay. Um, it's, it's not enough to start warming up your body. So at least 30 minutes, get that body warmed up and let's start to burn fat. And what would be optimal, an hour, 40 minutes? An hour should be more than enough, anything less than an hour. If you do more than an hour, then you're wasting your time or you don't know what you're doing. So go to our website, New Performance Training, get your program Love that there. plug. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I think that's, that's pretty self-explanatory. 30 minutes minimum a day, yeah. optimal you said as well. Does say, and then what is number three? So give me tip number three. Number three is eat vegetables. Oh, shocked. <laughs> so those of you who don't know, Reino is a 100% carnivore <laughs> and I am plant-based. And <laughs> what went wrong? <laughs> You're telling us eat vegetables. What do you mean by that? Um, vegetables, they... And people are probably going to stop listening and watching right now, all the, the proper <laughs> gym people. <laughs> Vegetables are um, very important. What I've seen that people struggle to lose weight is they are eating high glycemic carbs, and we're going to mm -hmm. get to that later. So sure. vegetables have a low count of carbohydrates, but right. it makes you full, full of nutrients. So eating vegetables is really beneficial for you. It makes you full, so you don't eat a lot of garbage. Without getting in too much detail, I believe you like the frozen veggies? I do, yeah. So you easy easy to prepare? Yeah, uh, so what I do is I do a 12 minute steam. So mm -hmm. I just take frozen vegetables. Steaming is obviously one of the better. We won't get into that though, yeah. one of the better. Specifically, um, carrots, cauliflower and broccoli. They've okay. got a nice um, amount of nutrients and low amount of carbs per 100 grams. Right. I've been dying to say this, the crucifixus vegetables, <laughs> which are the, the kales, the, the, I think it's kale, spinach, cabbage, yes. Mm, yeah, those <laughs> ones, they just give me gas, so I try to avoid them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move after that comment. Let's move right along to tip number four. Okay, tip number four is let's avoid high glycemic carbohydrates. So if you go to healthline.com, you can see they, they give you a list of high glycemic carbs. Mm -hmm. Some of the ones that I can mention from the top of my head is... All the nice stuff you about to mention. All the stuff that tastes really, really delicious. Nice, yeah. um, I wouldn't say like remove it completely, mm -hmm. but if you are serious about changing the way you look, high glycemic carbs are not going to get you there. Okay, so white rice, white brown bread, potatoes, macaroni, noodles, pasta. That's basically my whole diet down, <laughs> yeah. down the tube. So those ones, they, um, they spike your sugar and they drop, so you don't really feel good. And depending on how you train, those carbs are good for you, but then you need to train really, really hard. So if you want to have the benefit of not training as hard as you want, just you can just eat the vegetables, down. get the low, the low carbs in. And so it's the true then one. they say that six packs and eight packs are made in the kitchen, yes. not in the gym. That's true. Um, so when you guys are, are shredding for competitions and stuff like that, then you cut out all the carbs, is that correct? Yes. Um, I've, I've heard of many people where they say that they even remove salt completely. So 
But if you're not let's gonna, not get into yeah, that debate because some guys say salt's great, some guys say salt's yeah. Yeah. Let's just stick to eating normal food. Yeah. So eat your veggies. Try to take out your your sandwiches um, and eat your vegetables. Perfect. Tip number five: eat more protein. Eat more protein. Yes. Okay. So for those people that are plant-based or vegans that do not have you know meat by their side. Um, also studies show that meat is the most dense protein so it burns slower so it's good for you and um, but if you are not a meat eater or whatever you can find your alternative yeah there's apparently protein pea protein, protein and so protein, yeah. back to the carnivores you guys uh, what sort of meat would you recommend and how would you recommend cooking it just I mean, quick just a quick I don't want to get in too much detail but yeah um, and you say particularly meat as your protein is yeah. the easiest way. It is your protein, so you can also, um, I can eat all meat, but there's specifically people that can eat only chicken mm -hmm. or fish or red meat. So okay. if you get whatever you want. Um, don't waste your time in the kitchen, chop up the food, it takes 10 minutes to cook your meat. So yeah, that's the way I cook it in the pan, easy. Don't make it too difficult. Okay, keep yeah. it simple, keep basically. It simple okay, cool. And then, and your thoughts on, on protein shakes? I've seen some videos and some stuff where, where there's some really crap products out there and yeah. so on. Would you rather take the real thing over, over drinking a shake? So, um, getting back to eating food is better for you. You feel more full. Protein shakes, I would say if it's something, if you're preparing for a competition, yes. Get more protein in that way if you feel full all the time and you want to you know, stay lean and whatever. Yes, protein shakes, but food, the best way for Post me. Those prize. Yeah. Okay, tip number six. Tip number six, do strength or weight training. Okay. Um, what we do is we protect the joints. We use the muscles to protect the joints. Okay. Um, like our knees, our elbows, our shoulders, our calves. So doing weight training is good for you. And also, we spoke about it earlier that yeah we lose weight or we burn fat longer a couple of hours after that whereas um, if you were doing cardio cardio we burn fat in that moment in that in session, that session yeah. okay so uh, shout out to ryan fisher that uh, showed us a video of, of that um, bro love he says 23 hours yeah of you know still burning fat after that after mm -hmm. weight training but i would say four hours we, we still have to do a study about how long the fat burns after that, yeah. Okay, and you also mentioned, I mean, this is probably going to be a bit of a controversial topic. You're training up, you've got a guy in your class of 10 years old. Yes. Um, some people are concerned training weights, obviously not excessive weights, okay. but talk to me about training, you know, sort of what age can you start doing weight training? I would and, say, and let's be honest, this is not bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah, this is weight training. It's two very different yeah. things. Eh? Yeah, so we try to stay on functional fitness, mm -hmm. functional training. Um, so doing the general weight training um, movement so squatting, deadlifting, um, shoulder press, whatever that is, but not to use excessive weights. So, from the age of 10, mm -hmm. I would say that's a good age to start um, incorporating weights. Um, also, because people want to start gymming later in life, so if we can get the foundations of kids built up, because nowadays we see these 15 year olds get into the gym, they're doing winky poof deadlifts, you know, <laughs> bending their back like a dog taking a crap. So very bad form so that's what we're trying to do is to have a good technique from a young age the other problem is with bad forms that's where injuries come from yes obviously. yeah so bad form heavy weights we see a lot of it in the gyms and very, very so, bad, yeah. so you, you have a passion for training younger people giving them good form yeah. not particularly heavy it doesn't have to be no. and that, that obviously comes with the whole functional fitness thing it's about day-to-day -day yeah. stuff making in the life okay perfect i think that explains that well um we won't talk about we, Bodybuilding versus weightlifting versus all that sort of stuff. But, but in any case, any, any weight training is going to Any weight training is good, yeah. You're going to get 23 hours of burn afterwards, according, yeah. to, Simon, according to Ryan Fisher. According hashtag. to Ryan, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Let's move on to tip number seven. Okay, tip number seven. Um, this is not a scientific based. This yeah. is just uh, for pure motivation. Is be, be more concerned about how you look than what the scale says. Um, this has now been going on for decades where people rely on the scale to yes. tell them where they are in their journey. And I think we need to change that around. Let's start looking in the mirror and saying, am I satisfied or not? So take off your shirt, whatever, be completely nude, whatever is your prerogative. Whatever is your jam. Yeah. Um, and use that as motivation to say, I need to maybe change my food. 
And also another shout out to Mr. Ryan Fisher. Oh my. Um, he says that if you put a mirror on your fridge, it can also be a good motivation for what you take out of the fridge. Very yeah. nice. You look, I think there's, there's arguments. Some people say you shouldn't check your weight to your point because you're actually building muscle and yeah. whatever, every, mass, every kilogram of, of weight, fat you lose, you gain muscle. And, and if you're training properly, um, some people say you should be, be looking at the scale every day so it becomes a habit. Um, I, I, I do tend to agree with you. Like, look at your body, look how the muscles yeah. are developing. And, and some days you are going to be up, not yeah, so. That's true. So um, it gives you a really objective view if you look at yourself. And you and in your, your where your clothes are fitting also, as well. Yeah. We want to look good in our clothes. Yeah. Okay, so, perfect. So that was number seven. Number eight? Number eight is train to failure at least 50% of the time in a month during okay. your training. So What do you mean by that? That's, that's, for those listening who have no idea, like train to failure to 50%. So what we want to do is we want to, there's two ways um, I believe we can measure failure. The, the one way is when our form um, is, you know, affected. So for example, when we do a bench press and one arm is pushing the barbell rather than the other one, that means that we have reached failure the previous rep. Another way is we can count the seconds of what we do reps. So let's say the first five reps is five, uh, a second each, and then the other five following, the seconds start to build up. So now it's two seconds, two and a half, three, four. When we get to four, we know, okay, we are reaching failure. Okay, okay. at least for 80% to 100%. Effect. And how many sets would you do this? I would say five to seven sets would be a good amount to measure our failure and then let me ask you this question you weren't expecting this one why are we doing this why are we training to failure what is what is the science behind that the failure is that we are um, we are progressively improving when we do failure if we just do the minimum amount of reps and sets we aren't progressing we aren't pushing our body to the limit to know that i can go further we're just going through the motions yep. basically and that takes it to tip number nine and yep. that's what is that? That's workout with them? Workout with a coach or a partner. Exactly to your point now. Yeah, yeah. That understands a, a structured program. Okay, so um, we can go to the gym and do frivolous exercises. That's called exercising. When we have a structured program, that is training. We are working towards something. So it's good to have someone to lead you into reaching your goals than just going to the gym and doing whatever you want and you're not reaching your goals. We don't want to plateau um, or reach that point. If Which we, a lot of people actually do and then they get bored and then they actually leave gym after. Yeah, because nothing is working for me, but they don't understand the previous one, working to failure, or they don't have a structured program. So to solve that issue, I mean, you don't have to get a personal trainer. You could join a class, either a CrossFit yeah. or a functional fitness or yeah. uh, so on. And the, other, the other way is you also do programs that correct. Yeah. So the programs that we Personalized have, to the person. Yeah? yeah, so the programs that we do is it leads you to go into failure training, pushing your body to the limit, improving, becoming stronger, fitter, faster, everything through the program. And for those that want the community, also come and join the group exercises. Perfect. And then last but not least, tip number 10. Tip number 10, do workouts that challenge you. So I've, I've read up some, some tips on other websites and they say that do workouts that you enjoy. I do agree with that, but at some stage you're going to, you know, you're going to stagnate. So you have to be challenged. If it doesn't challenge you, it's not going to change you. If you do the same thing, you're going to get the same results. So you have to be challenged in all the movements that you do. And at some stage you will enjoy being challenged. So that's positive for your mindset. And seeing progress in your cardio, seeing yeah. progress in your day-to-day -day life. You look. Look. The mirror is not lying to you anymore. Yeah. Lovely. So that's our top 10. I'm going to, I'm going to, let's just go from the top again. Consistency. Train 30 minutes a day. Eat your vegetables. Avoid the high glycemic carb, carbs. Uh, eat more protein. Uh, do weight training. Uh, what was the number seven? Be more concerned about what we look like than, than the, the scale. scale so stop paying so much attention to the scale. Uh, train, and then eight was train to failure, 50%. Nine was work out with a gym partner or a coach or in a class, hopefully, or get a program. Yep. And then 10 was do workouts that challenge you. Thank you for your top 10. Where can we find you? You can find me on our website, uh -huh. newperformancetraining.com. Yep. And what about you can your also socials? See us on social media on YouTube, TikTok, mm -hmm. and Instagram, and also Pinterest. 
yep. new performance training. Thank you for your time today, Coach Reino awesome. Herselman. Thank you.